In C.S. Lewis's book, The Voyage of the Dawn Treader, a young girl, Lucy, her brother Edmund, and their cousin Eustace are taken to Narnia, where the Christ figure is a lion by the name of Aslan. The three of them go on a voyage and come to the island called When Dreams Come True, but in actuality, this is where nightmares come true. You see, the ship is overcome by fear, and they begin to wildly row in the darkness. Each sailor has a different terrifying noise, huge scissors, enemies crawling up the side of the ship, and gongs. So what does Lucy do? She prays. She prays, Aslan, Aslan, if you ever loved us at all, send us help now. Well, the darkness did not grow any less, but Lucy began to feel a little, very little, better. After all, she thought, nothing has really happened to us yet. And then a ray of light shines on the ship, and Lucy sees something in it like a cross. It's an albatross. And the albatross circles them three times and lands on their mast and then flies ahead of them, leading the ship out of the darkness. But no one except Lucy knew that as the albatross circled the mast, it whispered to her. It whispered, courage, dear heart. And she realized the voice was that of Aslan. In a few moments, the darkness lifted, turned to grayness. Then almost before they dared to hope, they were shot out into the sunlight and they were in the warm blue world again. And all at once, everybody realized that there was nothing to be afraid of. And there never had been. You know, these days we live in a world of fear. And at times we feel like those kids on the boat wildly rowing in the darkness. The Advent Christmas season sends each one of us a message, courage. God is with us, never lose heart. And we live in an age, because of all that's going on around us, when faith is needed now more than ever. Yet we know that many of our young people today have lost faith, and not just our young people. Many people have lost faith due to institutional sins and leaders who have failed. But our faith cannot rest in fallible leaders, nor in the trappings of institutions. Our faith must be so much deeper than rituals or incense or vestments. In a few short days, we come together to celebrate the reason we are here. We celebrate what faith must also be, always be centered in, the God who chose to become one of us. We may at times be discouraged by the forms that the church has taken since Jesus was born, but it just reminds us of how fallible and human we all are. And our faith must be so much deeper and so much stronger than that. It cannot just be faith in human beings or human institutions. The movie King Arthur retells the legend of the great warrior king who ruled England in the Dark Ages. Arthur is a Christian of Ro Roman origin, but his knights are all pagans who were forced into service at a very young age. Arthur was able to win over their allegiance by his selfless leadership, but they retained their pagan religion. In one scene in the movie, Arthur is preparing his supplies in a dimly lit stable. He's about to lead his knights on their last perilous quest before they will each be granted their freedom. Arthur, who is not yet king, is very frustrated. He's frustrated because his superiors are sending these young knights on such a dangerous mission, 
just before they're going to be released from duty. So Arthur takes his discouragement to God. He sets down the saddle that he's carrying and he bows in prayer. And then we see Lancelot. Lancelot emerges from the darkness and overhears Arthur praying. He says, why do you always talk to God and not to me? And Arthur responds, my faith is what protects me, Lancelot. Why do you challenge this? Lancelot replies, I don't like anything that puts a man on his knees. But Arthur tells him, no man fears to kneel before the God he trusts. Without faith, without belief in something, what are we? I think that's a question we need to ask ourselves these days in our troubled world, our troubled nation, our troubled church. As we struggle through these dark days, sometimes feeling like we are rowing wildly in the darkness, let us reflect and realize that fear keeps us defensive, ready to fight in order to defeat our opponents. That fear too often defines our priorities, our view of other nations and peoples who are different from us. That fear makes us see strangers as threats to our security and our way of life. That fear hardens us against those competing for the same resources and those holding different ideas and values, whether real or perceived. Let's move away from fear. Let us look rather to our faith. Not a faith in institutions or in fallible human beings. It's about a faith in the God who became one of us and continues to speak to each one of us. Let us hear that God speaking to us and look to our faith on this third Sunday of our Advent season, Gaudete Sunday, where the church, in the midst of all the darkness, calls us to rejoice. Let us hear that voice of the God-man, Jesus, saying to each one of us, as he said to those children on that ship, have courage. <laughs>